Hey everybody, Andy here, helping you build a career you love. Today we're gonna talk about how to thrive in 2022. If you are here with me live, get in the chat, say hi, let me know where you're from, let me know what you do, what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions. If you're in one of my programs, tell me with a hashtag. And while you're here, make sure to subscribe. Do it right now, don't forget, because I hate it when you miss my new videos every week, plus live office hours Thursdays like this. So, whether you're here with me live or watching on the recording, great to have you. We're gonna talk about some things that I think we need to be committed to, three things in particular for 2022. And I wanted to have this talk, it's January when we're doing this live. Maybe you're watching this sometime throughout the year on the recording, but never, never has there been more opportunity for you to do the things that you love, for you to set big goals and accomplish, accomplish, accomplish them. There's never been more tools available to you, more opportunities, more coaches like me to tell you how to do it. But it's one of those psych kind of things, right? The opportunity is there. And I believe what I just said, that there's never been more opportunity, but I also believe that it's never been more difficult never been more difficult to actually accomplish what you want. Why? Because we live in a distracted world. You are constantly being bombarded by things that don't truly matter to you, and you have not disciplined yourself, most people that is, to block those out, to avoid them, to get dial directed and never let anything in that's gonna set them off their path. So I'm gonna talk to you today about, about that. And every year I kinda have a theme for the year, I have a theme for the quarter, I have a theme for the month, I have a theme for the week, and I have a theme for my day. I'm not gonna take you through all that, but I wanna, I wanna give you a little peek into my world and how I think about making sure that I'm accomplishing my goals and what I actually do to stay committed to them. And then I'm gonna teach you some different ways to look at, at these commitments to give, you, to give you a better chance of being successful and what am I what am I what am I talking about here? The three things I'm gonna come right out with them because the the the, the beauty isn't in the three things I'm gonna tell you. The beauty is in the your ability to actually execute them. But I believe you need to be committed to your goals, like your big honking goals. I think you need to be committed to your learning and I think you need to be committed to your discipline. And those all work together in order to help you achieve your goals, accomplish your dreams, and do what it is that you want. So I want to break this down for you, what I do. Now, when I talked about, you know, each, each kind of month has a theme, well, it's January. So I've been spending a lot of time talking to you about your goals. And I helped you with some skill building stuff a week or two ago. I helped you with goal setting stuff. I shared my my Ironman triathlon journey with you a week or two ago and actually earlier in the year as well. So so this month is about that. And and next month is going to be about something else and the following month will be about you know something else. March will be about about addressing your stress levels and and your production because it tends to be a burnout month for people. That's what I'm talking about when I have a theme for you, but I think we need to have these themes for ourselves. So I want to I want to talk about that and 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 with with your goals I think the the one thing that's really difficult with goals is that we don't dream big enough. We I I've told you this before. I believe that you know I I laugh because when 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 I coach people and and we talk about their routines and their daily routines and their to-do lists and things that I hate and all, all that stuff. And I look and I say your to-do list for today is is so long. You think you can accomplish all these things in a day, but over the course of your lifetime, you don't believe you can start your own business, write that book, do whatever it might be on TV, shoot a pilot, whatever it is. So, so I want to talk to you today about how, how I drill things in to make that happen. And I want, to, I want to start with the goals, just a minute here, just to get a set. But I do believe you need to be committed to your goals. And a big part of being committed to your goals is identifying to you what truly matters and never, ever let that be at the mercy of something that doesn't. And, and I'm going to tell you some stories today about how these little intrusions happen in my life, and I'm sure there's an analogy for yours, but deciding what truly matters. So for me, there's only a few things that really matter. There's my, my family and my, my really, really core relationships. There's my, my health, but everything that I do that feeds that health. So I, I mentioned the, the, the triathlons that I do. 
that feeds my health, my diet or things of that nature, meditation, mind, body, and spirit. And then there's my work. You, you all are a huge part of my life. And I'm dedicated to that. Those are the only three things that matter to me. I have plenty of time every single day to focus on all of them. I do. Because why? Because I decided what mattered to me and I didn't let anything be at the... <laughs> Never let any of those things be at the mercy of something that's not. And you have to do it on a macro level and a micro level. But once you decide what truly matters to you, what I don't think a lot of people do is they don't actually take the right first step, which is actually subtracting other things from their life to make sure that their goals are going to be met. And they have created space and time to work on their goals because they haven't what I call simplified and and sacrifice. So you decide what you decide what uh, you decide what matters to you. You subtract out first, and then what you do is you add routines into your into your day, into your life, the way you 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 go about your day, the way you go about your life. That actually enables you once you've created that space. Now it creates time for you to work on the things that matter to you. And I think you need to be committed. So being committed and dedicated to your goal is one thing, but you also have to take these extra steps in order to achieve them. So first thing is make sure you simplify your life around you. Maybe that's clothes. Maybe that's the house you live in. Maybe that's the people you hang out with. I don't know. Maybe it's the hobbies. I had to, I had to, I had to ditch a few of my beloved hobbies if I wanted to spend more time achieving other things. And then add the routines. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some routines. Actually, we'll break that down here in a, in, in, in a bit. And then the other thing is, you know, what are, what are the will nots? Be, be, be very clear on what you won't do. And when you think about, when you think about this, I'm talking about, you know, it, you know the, the Iron Man example that I gave you. I, was, I train a lot each week in order to create an extra 25 to 30 hours in my life which is what it, what it actually gets dedicated to do all the routines, to run, to bike, to swim, to strength train, to see the doctors, to, to go through the treatments, to do what stretching and all the other stuff that goes along with it. I had to remove things. And in order, in order to do that, I had to sacrifice. So I had to simplify my life so that I created that space. So when you think about that, you want to you go on that diet. Simplify the things you eat put the routine in place to go to the grocery store on Sunday and Wednesday or Saturday and Wednesday or like us, I think we go on Saturday and Thursday or when I say we, I mean my wife. So, you know, and will nots, right? On the grocery list, the will not section should be you know, potato chips and the other things that I love so much. But that's what I'm talking about. That, that's just a little personal example, but, but this happens for businesses. So you all that run companies and teams and things of that nature, does your company actually have its goals in order? Has it simplified down to what are the things that matter? Does it have its values in place? If you are going to be customer service oriented and that is your number one goal, when you start looking at projects that you're undertaking as a company, do you go back to the boundaries you set and the vision you put forward and the routines that you should be putting in place to control what doesn't slip through. Why are we working on that project? It doesn't align to who we are. It doesn't align to what our goals are. And we do this in our personal lives. And, and, and maybe you are aligned, but here again, you're gonna be dealing with distractions and people that are gonna to wanna to take that away. So think about that. Think about, just think about being dedicated. This is what it's going to take. If, if you can decide what matters to you, never let it be at the mercy of something that isn't, subtract out, simplify and sacrifice, remove stuff, and then add the right routines in. You do not do these in the reverse order. It does not work. It has to go in this sequence. And then, and then as a bonus, make sure you're being conscious of the things that you will not do. You will not eat. You will not go to that bar or you will not go to that place or you will not hang out with that person or whatever it is. But this is what it's going to take. If you want more on this, I've given you an entire goal setting masterclass. It's six modules that I give away free if you are in my leadership program or you can or you can buy it outright if you want. If you want to watch some of the free stuff, check some of my goal setting videos on, on the YouTube channel and check out that Iron Man case study. But get committed to this. You're going to need to be directed. If you want to achieve your heights, you're going to have to be able to have those routines dialed in. All right, I want to talk about learning 
because uh, learning is a funny, it's a funny thing. Show of hands here. Show of hands, actually, whoever's here with me in the chat, and I, I know I will, I will gloriously say hi to all of you because I dove right in because I try to keep these topics tight and we'll have a healthy Q&A, but show of hands. How many of you think you're lifelong learners? Right? Can can just go go right in the chat. Tell me. I hear that a lot. Andy, I'm a I'm a I'm a life lifelong learner. And I, when I ask people, well, how, how how do you learn? What do you do? And they say, well, I read a lot of books, watch a lot of videos, and all that good stuff. And to that, I would say, you know, well, that's fine, right? Being a lifelong learner is you're fine, right? Kendra, Hero, Brian, and is in the, in the house, pumpy. You got a lot of boot campers here. But wait, and this is not to poo poo anything or anybody. But now I want you to be dead honest with yourself, okay? This might sting a little what I'm gonna say. All you guys coming in Jeff, Grace, John, LaShawn. Oh my God, you guys are awesome. Geraldine, great to see you. Thanks for staying up late. Okay, now, those 50 books you read last year, what'd you do with that knowledge? Have you applied it? Are you better for it? Do you just know what it is, right? All those nonfiction books you read, all those video, how-to videos you watched, what happened as a result of what you learned? So learning is fine. Yes, that's step one. And you know what? Applying what you learn is step two, and that's a bit better. But learning and applying what you learn for the benefit of others is the ultimate. This is what helps. This is what helps the world. This is what makes the world a better place. I want you to think about this. All those books you read, could you have essentially, all those nonfiction books, could you just been re reading a novel? If, is it entertainment? That's okay too. I don't, not, nothing wrong with that. I'm talking about achieving your goals here today. All right? So, so yes, but what did you do with that? Yes, some of you did. Some of you read and applied it. I get that. But I'm asking you, just think about that. Just because you're reading the marketing book doesn't mean you're doing something with the marketing knowledge. And this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk here for a few minutes about how I want you to think so that you go from here to here damn quickly, okay? So I don't want you to just learn. I don't want you to just apply what you're learning. I want you to apply what you're learning for the benefit of others or the benefit of your team or the benefit of your company or something bigger than you. Okay. All right. So when I think about, when I think about, you know, how I learn, I, I, I call these the ABCs, ABCs and Ds of Andy's learning. I think in terms, this is how I think about learning. All right. These four things. There's the specifics of what I need to learn. There is the underlying skill sets that enable me to do the specifics. What do you often hear me call these? These are like the hard skills. These are like the capabilities. You might hear me call them that or abilities. Tools, tools that actually enable my ability to do this, okay? I sell products. I sell training products and coaching services. YouTube is a tool, right? I have to learn YouTube, okay, kind of thing. And then there's the vehicles that I use to learn, all right? So what are we talking about here? Think about these four things because this is the fastest route to the application of what you're learning. All right, so I think about specifics. I have to learn how to build a training product, which means I have to learn how to set up a teaching course. Well, if I wanted to learn, what would I need to know and how, what are the steps and I need, I'm gonna have to convince them that I need them to do it this way because they're not gonna believe me or they're, I'm gonna have to retrofit all the bad advice they're getting. And so I, have to, and I have to know how to do all that. Okay, so there's products and tools that I have to learn, but there's really like the coursework, the framework, and so on. That's what I'm talking about specifics. I have to sell stuff, right? That's, a, that's, a, that's a something I have to learn. Okay, now, the underlying skill set. So what would that be in my analogy? Well, I have to know how to market. Marketing principles. Well, how do people buy stuff? Well, you have to show them how their lives are going to be transformed. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I could talk it to them. I could take my shirt off and flex if I'm selling, you know, health services and, you know, in the gym trainer services, something like that, be a billboard, right? Or what is it that I, I have, well, marketing is, is also building a relationship with them, my copywriting skills, and the, I have to learn how to write and those kind of things. These are skill sets, right? Let's think about that. Then there's the tool, 
well, I have the email system that Karen knows how to use and you don't want me anywhere near, but it's a tool, right? I got to learn that. And then how do I learn? Well, the vehicles might be what? Training courses I could take, videos I could watch, books I could read, right? Going back to that analogy. Uh, could be any, any number of things. Could be friends that I talk to. Could be coaches and mentors and people like that. So when you think in these terms, that helps you break down and group the way you need to learn things. Now, I gave you, if you were here with me on January 13th, and if you were my premium member on the 14th too, a whole skill building pyramid in my leadership program of how I think through the growth of me long term being dedicated to that, sequencing the right skill sets to become a visionary, to go from being a producer to a better communicator to an influencer, right? To being able to direct and manage teams and people all the way up to being a visionary. And there's a way to go about this. And how to get there the fastest is thinking in these terms, this is step one, okay? To know your inventory. But then people get confused and they say, well, I wanna read this new book that came out. Well, every, every day new, book, new, new books come out but just because a favorite author of mine has a book that's being released on a given day doesn't mean I'm going to go and I'm going to buy it. Why? For the same reason that as an executive recruiter, when I would help a client find somebody that they were looking for, chief marketing officer, the head of sales, a technologist or whatever, and I would get all these emails from people that were sending me their resume who were out of work or hated their job and said, hey, I got your name and I hear you're a great executive recruiter and I'm wondering if we could take some time to talk to each other. And I would say, nothing. Because I'm being directed by my clients and their needs. And then the people would say, well, don't you need to fill your database up with people so that when a client comes to you and they want somebody, then you have people ready. That happens naturally when I sequence what I do based on my priorities, which are dictated by my client's priorities, not your priorities, right? So what, what, what's my analogy saying? So when I think about learning, it's the same way I, look, I thought about building my network as an executive recruiter. I think in terms of my theme for the year, my theme for the quarter, my theme for the month, my theme for the week, my theme for the day. And then I think in terms of week, what will help me, what will help me this week? And I'm talking about my business in this case. What will transform my business long term? Okay. This week, what will help me? My marketing skills. Why? Because I got a sale going on. Deadline's tomorrow, right? What will transform my business long term? More marketing skills more automation skills so that people could watch my stuff while I'm sleeping, right? That's what I mean. And then what will make me feel better, right? This is a, this is a contributor because I, I need to be engaged. So what I do is I think about if, so I don't, look, learning happens in the wake of what I need, okay? It doesn't happen because I'm a lifelong learner. So when I look at my month, and now we're talking February, so I don't know when you're watching this, but it's January now. But I'm thinking February. Actually, I'm thinking March, too. And I'm looking at what needs to be learned in order for me to change what I need to change. Great example here. On early January, I needed to take training specifically designed to change something that I need to change that, isn't, that actually happens officially now, okay, in a week or something like that. So I know that my need is X weeks out, and what do I need to learn a different tool? I needed, to, I needed to investigate something. I needed to do a different technique. I actually needed to plan for time to learn it, do it, screw it up, fix it, and then watch it, okay? So now think about, do you think in those terms? Right, I gotta learn it, I gotta do it, I'm gonna screw it up, no doubt you will, or it won't, you won't attain what you want, and what do you do? Oh my God, it didn't work out. I was sold a bill of goods. No, that never happens. So that's what I'm talking about. So when you think in, in these terms, in these terms, you will learn faster. You will learn better, and the ROI will be short and long term. 
Now, I'm not gonna dive in into this anymore, but one thing that I will say is I think about every single week, just like every single day, those of you that are in my productivity training uh, course, the productivity challenge, and I talk about my day is allocated to do short-term things that are due that day, mid-term things that are probably due that week or the, or the next week or whatever, and then long-term things, things that I won't realize for a month or longer every single day, but every single week, the same thing is allocated to what? To the learning that I go through. There are things I need to learn that I'm gonna do right now. There are things I need to learn that I have to build right now so I could do next week. There are things that I'm planning for 2023 already that I'm doing. So, so that's what I'm talking about. And so if you wanna be a lifelong learner, go read the books. Yes, go watch the videos. Yes, go buy the training courses, hopefully mine, but I don't care, just educate yourself, but then sequence it so that you'll get a short-term hit, you'll get a long-term benefit and transformation of you or your team or your whatever it is that you wanna do. And that's the way to think about that. Be committed to it. When I say committed, this is what I mean, right? So you gotta go to this length. Don't say I'm gonna read 50 books. That isn't, in, if your goal is to actually do something with it, what are the 50 books? When are you gonna read them? Okay, so I wanted to change something. I'm reading, you know, I read the marketing book two weeks ago. I needed to change something. Okay, so, 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 so think about that and think about, these are a few questions that I asked myself. I can't, you know, I tried to give them to you in questions that you could, you could ask yourself. All right, hey, if you're loving this so far, can I get a hey in the chat? Can I get, can you click that little likey thing and can you make sure you're subscribed? All right, I want to go on to discipline. This is, this is a fun one. So what enables you to stay on track is your proper routine, right? You might've heard me say and about a million other people, right? You might attain your goals. I said this in 2013. You might attain your goals, right? But you, you, you might rise to the level of the target, right? I want you to aim high and even if you don't get there, that's okay, but if you, if you push yourself, but you will definitely fall to the level of your processes or your systems or your tools or whatever you dial in, right? If this is weak, this never happens up here. Okay, so you gotta dial those in. Then you need incredible willpower, incredible willpower to resist the outside and anything that's gonna break your system, all right, or drag you away from it. So what I, what I do is I have, this, I have this focus that I just have worked on for many, many years that I practice not just every single day, but every hour every single day, and then every minute in between every hour exercise that I go through. So I'm talking about being disciplined and being focused, dialing routines in, okay? And then referring back to that productivity challenge I mentioned where I outline exactly how I plan my life with the lists. I plan it by the quarters, the months, and then how I go through the week, how the week is planned and how the day is run and how I run my projects. But you've gotta have some, I'm gonna give you a tip here on the, on the schedule. In order for you to achieve those goals and stay disciplined and dial your learning in that's gonna support your ability to do that, it has to be done in the context of time, not check boxes, okay? Meaning, meaning, you can't just say, well, my to-do this week is to read three chapters of that book or to finish that whole book. It needs to go on the calendar somewhere. Just like every minute of every day of my life, I don't know, book is right, oh, it's right here, I guess, right here. I can never do that, um, is, is planned. So I don't use to-do lists. I have a weekly list and I break that down by what needs to be completed that week, what needs to be completed, some progress I need to make, an, uh, uh, things I need to make progress on that week because there's a deadline the following week or the following week or the following week. And then there's other things that are maintenance things, ongoing things that I do all the time, like send you an email on Tuesday and Thursday, the coaching sessions that I have piled up one after another today, right? Those kinds of things. So I need to get them scheduled and we need to get them on the calendar. So every minute of every, of every day is scheduled in my life. And 
I'm never going to let the things that I commit to and my goals be at the mercy of something that's not. So a lot of you, what you do is you have to-do lists, which I don't recommend. A a, a to-do list, it's too easy for you to be distracted away from the to-do or not get the deliverable done. So at between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock on my calendar today said do something and, and, and then right in that box it said that's the damn thing that needs to be completed. Okay, not make progress on unless it was a long-term thing, but it was something that was due today, okay? So that's what I'm talking about. And then you are less likely to be taken away from that. Let me give you a story. Because I, number one, the story's recent, eight days old. Number two, it encapsulates everything I'm talking about today. So I was uh, working last Wednesday. Okay, so this is eight days ago. We're on a Thursday right now. You might be watching this on a Tuesday or one of the other six days of the week. But eight days ago, uh, I was checking my email at around lunchtime. Okay, so I haven't checked the email. I didn't check the email from five in the morning till what was about noon. And about an hour before that, coincidentally, this producer from a national cable news station a legit station that sit there right next to CNN and my Comcast cable guy. And he said, uh, hi, Andy. I gave me his name. He said, uh, I'm a producer. I'm doing a segment on, uh, I want to get your thoughts on, uh, because of this hyperinflation, uh, I want to get your thoughts on how people can negotiate a raise at work. Would you be willing to have a call with me so I could get your thoughts? And this is what they do. They want to talk to you if they don't know you. And they want to basically see what you got to say and if you can walk and chew gum at the same time and then we'll put you on the show. So uh, I got back to him an hour later and I said, hey, um, great to thank you. First off, it's wonderful to be asked. Thank you. I looked him up because I wanted to make sure that he was legit because I get a lot of scams. And he was. And he actually used to work for a, a news station where I actually did some morning show visits with them about job stuff. And I made reference. I said, hey, I noticed you worked over at such and such in the Weigel family and this and that. And I used to be on this show. And uh, I would be happy to talk to you and help you if I can. can. Can you please tell me how much time you need? Because I knew, I know how these guys work. They want it right away. That was it. Please tell me how much time you need. And I will see what I can do. So I went about my day. And I got back to my email at 7.30 that night. Okay, so he gets back to me uh, like, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes later and apologizes for taking so long to get back to me and says, can we hop on a call in in 15 minutes? I didn't see that email. Then a half an hour after that email, he said, can we push it till 4 o'clock? And I'll talk to you then. What's your cell? I didn't see that email. And then 7.30 rolled around and I got his emails. And I replied to him and I said, um, you know, thank you so much. I wish my schedule was that flexible. Uh, I would be happy to help you if you let me know how much time you need. And and I can already see how urgent this is for you. You know, my schedule books weeks out in advance. So I, I can try to get something on our calendar for next week if you let me know how much time you need. If that's too far out, that's okay. And I'll, you know, see you later. And so... My point to this story, and it's not done yet, but I am dialed up based on what I committed to, what I need. And you might be thinking, well, Andy, isn't that a great opportunity? Won't you get national visibility for whatever? But we live in such a distracted world, and like, to really laugh? You know, when I went on and I turned the station on, and there's two people talking, and at the bottom of the thing is the ticker, is the news. Above that is the stock prices, and I think they might have had a third one. And I'm thinking to myself, if I went on this station, how would anybody be able to pay attention to me with all the stuff going on in their face? right? And this is the world that we live in. But what's really funny about this story, and what I'm really trying to convey to you by dialing in your big and long-term goals, is that he was asking me about the changes I would make to negotiating a raise because we are in a situation of hyperinflation and prices are rising. But what, how disappointed would he have been when I would have said, well, actually, I have the same techniques because whether the market's going up or the market's going down or the market is flat, 
for you to maximize your raise or your new salary or whatever it might be at any moment in time has absolutely nothing to do with the circumstances. Yeah, it might be easier for you to get a raise where, where salaries are rising like they are now, but can you imagine how, how big that raise would be if you just did what I told you? And, and, and if, if, the, if the market was falling, how much better off you'd be if you used the same principles? Don't, con don't confuse changing circumstances with changing long-term environment. The environment might look a little different. And you will never be a product of your circumstances. You're always going to be a product of your choices. You'll never be a product of your circumstances. It will always be about your tactics. You will never be a product of your circumstances as much as you are your mindset and your attitude. And you, and you might be thinking, well, isn't that a great opportunity? Well, yeah, but, but another one will come along. And if one doesn't, then I'll manufacture one some way if that was important to me on my schedule, on my time, when it fits in my goals. So don't, we're, we're all so worried about trying to find the next biggest, best thing. We're all so worried about missing out. I got news for you. There'll be another TikTok. And, and, and I can't package up what I need to share with you in 15 seconds. It'll never work. You need more information. Okay, so it's more important for me to take the slow route, to go bigger. So that's what I'm trying to impress upon you guys is don't get distracted by all these things that are coming around. The marketing tactics will never change. If I have to shoot a video, I still have to give you the same messages. If I write you an email, I still have to give you the same messages. The salesman that walked door to door still had to show you how much better that vacuum cleaner was, right? Or what it's going to do or how it's going to make your, your carpet look. Right. So so stay dialed in to what you to what you need and don't get distracted by the outside. But in order to do that, you need to be dialed in on your days. And, and if you're not committed to your goals and you're not committed to learning to to learn what you need to do to achieve those goals and you have not set up an infrastructure for yourself where you are so disciplined that you will you will have unwavering focus when it comes to that. You're not going to get anywhere. It's getting harder opportunities, there's lots of them. They're just a lot harder to achieve these days. All right. So that's my theme. That's what I'm going to be committed to for 2022. It's the way I operate my life, but it is becoming especially important. And when things change, you're going to have to do more practice. All right. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you're here with me live, we're going to the chat. If you're watching me on the recording, I'll see you next week. Take care and get dialed in. All right. Okay. Hope you guys like that. I wanted to spend 30 minutes sharing it. And uh, you guys are awesome. My good, good, goodness. Did I loot? Did I? Oh, my God. Mm. All right. Hey, a couple of a quick announcements. Uh, Apollo team, I'll see you tomorrow. We're going, we're going, we're going deeper on our skills building. Uh, for those of you that have been hiding under a rock. I have got mega hours of job search coaching. I'm going to I'm going to get in your inbox on Sunday with a video networking video. A couple of inspirational stories on networking to kick a, kick the week off and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Getting directed, resume writing, job searching, interviewing, and salary negotiation every day at 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. And then if you are in the job search coaching program, after those sessions at 1 o'clock, I'm getting with you Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's, that's just next week. The following week, we're back on Tuesday. I got a bonus recap of that. It's the job search mini camp. Maybe my team could politely put that in the chat and pin it up so you can be registered because I got a workbook and all that stuff for you. On Wednesday, that's, that's Tuesday. We're coming Tuesday the eighth. We're coming back with a bonus. Wednesday the 9th, I've got a big session with people in my job search coaching program. That's a fourth pri private session. On uh, on the following day, on the tenth, I think. What am I talking on the tenth? Am I talking? Is that stress management or is that something? And then on the eleventh, I have a leadership coaching session. I think I'm talking patience. So maybe I am doing it that way. I, I'm sure I got one <laughs> wrong. I'm, today starts 11 of 12 straight work days where I'll be live for multiple hours. So if, if you, you, know, you want to get on the Andy channel, and maybe I'll have my own cable news station, 
that was my dream to be a talk show host. Okay, I don't think I could pull it off, but I got a question here that was in early that I absolutely loved. And we lost it and I, I, I wanna, I, I, but we got it. But first thing I wanna do today, speaking of Apollo and speaking of leaders and speaking of boot campers and speaking of Lifetime Mile Walk Academy mem members, uh, did I see in the chat somewhere, I think I might have lost it, that Laura Cobb, uh, whose, whose first chapter I read, which was awesome, is, is launching her book today. Can we, this is what I'm talking about, people. Can we give her a high 10? Man, I, Laura, I love you. I'm sending you, you know, what is that? The good, the good, the good big hearts and, and good Andy Juju and vibes. I hope we can send her all Mile Walk Academy community, Andy live office hours, vibes too. Lots of luck. I, I know bigger things are coming. It's just the beginning. Hang in there. Dial in. Routines. Goals. Learn. Love you. Okay. Congratulations to you. Uh, now, Wesley Kelly Clock, whatever, the, however that is, is there, this is the question I wanted. I love this question, by the way, and I want to thank you for kicking us off with this. And if you can't see it in the chat, it was because it was earlier. And some of you guys get in there so dang early that we lose some of the, we lose some of the chat. All right. Is there a video that addresses overcoming a bad interview? I stayed in the past, meaning, meaning what she's explaining here. I stayed in the past and not the future when talking over experiences. I think my example projects weren't aligned the best. Okay, just to clarify what she's saying is one, one of the things that I recommend is in order to kill the interview, meaning crush it in a Andy smoking sort of way, is the more in the future you can keep the interview, meaning you know, you can talk about your past, but you want to get to their future. You want to be talking about their situations and how you would apply what you learned to what they need because it's the easiest way for them to connect the dots of whether you will work there effectively. You want to make it as easy on them to see that as possible. Okay, that's what she means. But regardless, the thrust of her question here is actually, or if it's, I don't know if it's Wesley he or, or Kelly she, or I think I saw a picture of a woman, but regardless, whoever you are, um, is there a video that addresses overcoming bad interviews? Now, I don't have a specific video that's titled, you know, go and address bad interviews this way. Let me tell you how I would approach this. Number one, oftentimes, oftentimes, we are more critical of ourselves than the employer. Now, I know sometimes we think we did well and then we don't know why they don't call us back. Let's just say, sake of argument, that Wesley Kelly is, is correct and, and they, didn't, they didn't score super well. The one thing that I would do, if that was me, and I had that feeling that when I got out of there, I didn't really get them into the future, I would simply say, I would use my thank you template. Can we, can we uh, Stace, can we throw, or Kara, whoever, can we throw the thank you template in the, in the chat? Grab my thank you template, or better yet, grab this guy. There's a thank you template in here. This book you can have. I'll ship it anywhere into the world to, for, to you for seven US dollars. You get the ebook, the audiobook, the hardbound. You get some other bonuses. But in that thank you, you want to thank them for their time. The obligatory thank you, so, you know, so much for, for you know, taking the time to see me. And when you want to talk about your strengths in, in the middle paragraph, about why you're a strong match, why you're a strong candidate, why you're a great fit. Use whatever language you want, but I give you I give you the template. And you want to reiterate like, like you smoked it, okay? You know, I feel like I'm a great... Um, if given the opportunity to return, I would love to, to spend some time talking about how I could apply my experience to your, to your company and any, any situations you might have or something like that. Just express that, okay? Remember this. Remember this, Wesley Kelly. They asked you about your past. That was their sin. Okay? So to me, they're, they're asking you about your past. It, they're, they're not asking you how would you do this in the future. So, yes, it would have been better, but I would not. I, at this point, what's done is done. So I would just say, if, if given the opportunity or, or if they let you know you're coming back or whatever... Just say, I, I really would love the chance to share how I could apply my skills in your, in your environment or something like that, looking forward, you know, and the rest of the template 
will 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 take you out and I would just fill it in that way. So I I'm not about I am not about sending messages where even if you are correct admitting that you did poorly or apologizing, not even using the word, but but like as if I could have scored better, but well, hey, one thing I, you know, forgot to mention, one thing I didn't, you know, don't do any of that. Okay? Don't I you you can you can say one thing I'd like to add is if it's super short, but nobody wants to read a long explanation about how you would do something, right? So you just want to, you, you just want to make sure, uh, you know, and if you could say, hey, I, you know, if given the opportunity, I'd love to be able to walk through how my framework, playbook, methodology, approach would, would align to your situations. Thinking, well, when you should ask me anyway, right? So that's my, that's my view on that. Okay, don't, don't beat yourself up, all right? So I don't know that the interview went badly. You might have thought it went badly because then you went and watched an Andy video about what I would have hoped you did, okay? So good luck. Good luck to you. And again, Laura Cobb, crushing it. All right, and then David Gurton, I got you. How you doing, handsome? You are wearing Job Search Minicamp 2022 colors, my friend. Because I'm all black and red. Last year I was red and then black on red. This year I'm... Black with red on black. All right. Let's get this up here. All right, Dave, what does it mean when a company says we're locally owned and operated, debt-free, no venture capital, or shareholders pulling strings, don't do work for third parties, and we don't have budgets? Go work for that company. Basically, what they're saying is, we don't answer to other people so we can control it ourselves. And let's just simplify this. So if it, and I don't know what kind of company this is, but if based on the nomenclature, they're locally owned and operated, I'm guessing it's a smallish, what could be construed as a franchise. You know, so you got the pancake house, but there's 80 pancake houses with all the same name. You got Burger Kings. Those are all independently owned and operated they pay a franchise fee or tax okay now when you start getting into larger companies that are have shareholders or venture capital money so i was an angel investor in a consultancy and so i basically my check my check was the first outside check written to this company and then i got some friends and i got their checks too we dumped the money in then what happened is they used that money, the seed money, to hire some people and do some things. And we advised. I sat on an advisory board and those kind of things. And, okay, so that's a little bit outside money. But we were, you know, consulting partners, not, not large, you know, majority shareholders. We had a piece of the pie. Then what happened was, we, a few years later, they bought me out at a hefty profit, thank God. And, but they got venture capital money. Because we started to grow. That was, I served my purpose, so to speak. But that venture capital money came in. And then what happens when the venture capital money comes in, and if it's sizable, well, you know what happens. Anybody with, you know, with the purse strings has got a voice and wants certain things done certain ways. And those people need to be paid back their money as quickly as possible and as much as possible. And what happens is the operating procedures, the behavior, uh, who's calling the shots and all those things is turning, turned over to someone else. And so for, from an employee perspective, that can be good or it can be bad. Uh, I, I personally, if I'm you and you like working at, I don't know what this company is or how big they are, but if you go into them and they say, no, this is it. There's the management team. They all sit among the staff. Here we go. This is our philosophy. You know what they're saying. You're kind of getting it from the horse's mouth. Okay. So, so that might be a good thing for you. But if, if, if you want to work for a larger company that's growing faster because it has more financial backing, then maybe it's not as good a thing for you. In that management team's mind, they think that's an attractor. To state that to potential employees, they're saying, this is a positive about us, and we don't answer to anybody, and we don't owe any debt, so we're financially, you know, we're financially stable, and all that good stuff. So that's that's what it is. So they don't have any outside capital. They don't answer to anybody. They call the shots. They take the hits and they take the rewards. So that's that's what that means. And then you decide if that's something you want to do. If 
that's the way, the route you prefer. Adam Stark, my brother from the other side of the pond, how you doing? What can I put in the boss hunting paragraph about the boss's background that's not generic? Every boss is going to be different. Some, it might be their meteoric rise. Some, it might be where they worked or what they did. So it, 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 the point is, find something that you can say. But more than anything, the, the, the thing that's important about the boss hunting message, there's multiple things that are vital if you're going to use that. Number one, it needs to be personalized. Oh man, wait, do I, hang on. I might have, I might have something. Hang on, let me see if I can get this really, ah, I do. See this? Remember this one, Adam? Write your email first things first after you write any email to anybody. I don't care if it's a boss or whoever. I want you to read it and say, does this look like the only email like this in existence? So if you are saying, Andy, I'm sending this message to you because whatever, you are the owner of Mile Walk Academy and blah, blah, blah. And I really loved, right, the fact that you were an executive recruiter and so on. And I want to come to work for a job search coaching or a leadership coaching or a whatever because. Okay, that's a one of a kind email. All right, so you, you primed it, you put me in a po positive posture. And so that's good. The second thing that's really important about boss hunting is that you actually, actually, actually have skills that I would need. Okay? So if so I get people who like this is like a dozen of these a day. Andy, your thumbnails stink. I'm a graphic designer, you could use my help. Now technically, yeah, I would, except that's a little off putting, and I know my thumbnails ain't great, but I don't really right, like, but that would be something that I could need. Or I might need other job search coaches if I ha if I thought trust was transferable, which I don't. And so, so like the so you have to like if you're gonna hit the VP of sales, you better have sales skills. If you as an event planner or an event marketer or a whatever, you're gonna go to the chief marketing officer and say, I noticed I right your company does great events. I want to be part of a leader, which you are and I'm bringing my event planning skills or whatever, you have something I need, okay? That's the second point. Those gotta be in there. If you are boss hunting, and this is not just for Adam, if any of you are boss hunting and you have marketing skills and I'm the VP of sales, then you are hoping and praying that I'm gonna get you to the marketing person because you don't have what I need, right? So, so th this is really important. So like career changers say, well, the boss hunting tactic isn't working. Of course it's not working. Because you don't have what the boss needs. You're trying to change industry lines, product lines, solution lines, careers, or whatever. So do that. And then you're asking me about, is it okay to mention a line why they're a target company? You can. You can. Right? I, I love, I, I talk, like you do something like that. I talked to people who went to one of your events last year, or two people, and they raved. One of a kind. It's one of a kind. One of a kind. Go get him. Joe, Joseph Luster. A selling point my recruiter had for a role was that I would be able to work overtime in case I need, well, it could be a, <laughs> in case I needed to take time off. After accepting and starting, I learned this would not be allowed. Uh, this would not be allowed. Is this a common occurrence? Any advice? Okay. I'm gonna make this one quick. So bait and switching is not a common occurrence because what I would have done is I would not have taken any recruiters, internal or externals word that that was what I could do. I would go to the boss and I would ask, uh, if I need time off, and I, you know, if I need a day off, can I make those eight hours up and work four 10 hour days that week? Is that something that you would be okay with? Or is there a corporate policy regarding that? That's it. That's your answer. So I would never take anything the recruiter said ever at face value. 
anything the recruiter told me, I would be asking the hiring official to confirm. And that is, that's, it's okay to do that. Believe me, because then you get into positions like this. And if it's a third party recruiter, you should never take what they say uh, for granted. I mean, I would always counsel my job candidates, and as you confirm this, ask them, go ahead. But if I'm talking with them about whether they're enticed to go into the, to interview for the role, I'm gonna share that so you can validate all this. Okay, uh, let's see, I've got a, I gotta raise your hand here. TD Washington is a boot camper, right? Should I register? Oh, you are, okay. Should I register for the mini camp if I am already enrolled in the job search program? Yes, go ahead. You're gonna, by the way, what, okay, I didn't, I didn't like play this up, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this now. So the job search coaching program is my, we call it the boot camp because it used to be called the job search boot camp. We no longer officially call it that, but I, I will always call it the boot camp. It's the full kit, the whole kit and caboodle. You get everything forever and ever that I do job searching, okay? Meaning, meaning once you're in the program, you not only have access to all the assets, the whole system and everything you need to find your job, you get lifetime online support and lifetime attendance at the 24 or so group coaching, premium group coaching sessions that we have every year. So I have four of them coming up starting February 1st. In addition to all of that, anytime I run an event like this, like the Job Search Mini Camp 2022, you get all the recordings free of charge. No more, I should say no more, no more enroll. You don't have to buy it. You don't have to worry about it. You can't make the whole thing. I give you everything or access to it if you would like. And I, I, this is automatically going to be added to your training, for example. So if you miss anything, you're going to have it. You have 2021's version as well. You have all the other, you know, camps and mini camps and workshops and things as well. Now, should you register? I would register. Make sure you're getting the notifications. Make sure you're getting the emails. Each morning at 7 o'clock my time, I'm going to send you an alert. It's going to give you an opportunity, you know, know where to go. Make sure you got the workbook. Just you can follow along. Make sure, you know, if you're not if you're not TD Washington and you're not in the boot camp, you can grab it. It's on special right now. We're going to be raising the price. Okay, so I would get in there. It's never going to be cheaper than it is right now. It's already discounted right right now through February 9th. Fits me and I'm I would go look at all those testimonials. I would look at the videos. I would look at the written things that people send me and the stuff in my inbox is all on a page for you. And I would look at pick my pick my package get in, I'd go through it, I'd come next, you know, next week to the sessions, the extra sessions, and ask me your questions. And ask me, you can ask me your questions in the public viewings or in the private viewings. It's really a good program. It is, it is a steal. I have other career coaches who I love emailing me and asking me to raise the price because they want to raise their prices as well. So it's really kind of a funny little unit we are, but I, it just, it's, it's, it's crazy. They're actually right because it, it should cost twice what it does. And it's still worth it at twice the cost. It's worth it at three times the cost. Here, O'Brien, aloha. Oh, is, I'm guessing who that is. Oh, this is Gina. Okay, I knew it. Good to see you. I'll see you tomorrow. Is it mahalo, aloha, and all that? Apollo? All right. I like this question. David, you're living right today, buddy. You must have got here early. This is a quick one. What are your thoughts on sending an updated resume to the HR team even after you applied and they are still evaluating candidates? If you applied online, I would email them like they never saw your resume. You take the new version and you try to target a boss or you target the HR team or you target a teammate or a recruiter or whatever, okay? Anything is better than the ATS. If you cannot find anybody, I would take my new resume and I would reapply. Why? Because you're a whole different person. Yes, yes, you are. To the ATS, you are actually a new person because you got a new resume because it's filtering that new resume now, not the old one. If you sent your old resume and you got an interview and you have a much better like Andy version of your resume, then what you do, what do you do? 
You ask the recruiter, you say, I, I'm in the middle of my search, obviously, as you know. I've been uh, updating my resume, making it better, more, you know, highlighting better thing, whatever you want to say. Would you be interested in a copy of my updated one? I could forward that to you. Or you, you could attach it to the, and just be presumptuous and go ahead and do that. Let the recruiter sort it out if you do not yet have an interview. If you, meaning, meaning you, got the, you got the interview, but you haven't gotten in physically into the interview or into the Zoom or whatever. If you get the interview and you don't have time to get it to the recruiter, if you are in the interview, then my first reaction is to let it go because if they've actually looked at your resume, hope, here's what I hope they did. They read your resume. They took some notes. Okay. Every time I, every time I got a bunch of coaching sessions this afternoon, I read all their paperwork. I read all their job descriptions that they want me to look at. Some they applied, some they're targeted, some they're in the middle of, some they want to shoot for. I got notes all over them, right? You want interviewers doing that. And then, then when you get in there, what you don't want is you don't want to give them, say, if you're physically there with them, hey, do you want my new copy? Well, if they, if they take the new copy, they don't have their notes and they don't know where things are that they might want to reference. You can ask them, hey, um, by the way, I updated my resume. Would you be interested in a new copy? I realize you might have looked, if, especially if you see them have your resume. So I see you have my resume there. I you know, certainly don't want to you know, jimmy up anything you did there, but if, if you're interested, I have a copy or something like that. That answers them all. Okay, go get them. Caprice, how are you? We need, yes, I am in the house. Paco, great to see you. Tony P, always fun to have you, buddy. You know I love you. I love you like a brother. And Wesley, I did get that. That was the question uh, that I answered out the box. Laura Brown, hi to you. Kara, hey to you. Anybody trying to work remote? Everybody just about now. Grace, my beloved boot camper, how are you? Here today, big thank you to Annie, uh, Kara, and Stacy. I got it. a job. I... Wait, what do you got here? What do you got? Can we give her... Can, I, can you send me the testimonial? Can you send me the email so I could do the dance the jig with you? Can we give her a high 10? Big shout out to you. Got the job. I did it mostly by the book. Didn't negotiate the salary. That's okay. And as didn't want a target on my head. That is all right. You are an inspiration. She goes on to say, you're an inspiration. You kept me going when I felt like giving up and always put me in a good mood. Grace, high 10. I love it. Folks, Every one of you, to me, is a unique individual going through your own struggle or aspiration or both, and I, it, it will never get old for me to hear from you that you scored. I mean, if I made a, and even if you hadn't, if I in some way made a positive impact on your life, that thrills me, and that I want to hear too. Because believe me, it never gets old, and I need it for inspiration too. To know that that I'm helping you and changing your life for the good, I pray on it every day. I meditate on it every day. I say it before every live show. So, I, Grace, I'm so happy for you, and thanks for being here. Thanks for all the attention. Thanks for being a boot camper, and huge congrats to you. And Kendra, you too. Just a wonderful, wonderful crew. And baby girl, what's up? Gene Rebo, my lifetime leader. See you tomorrow. Gene, you need to use your Apollo hashtag now because that's the like, that's the super uber label. Jim R, what's up, John? How are you? John Whitworth, Daryl D, my boot camper, and Kurt, how are you? Oh, from Barrington. So you're freezing too, man. What is it? 28? That's not too bad. Mary Jazz Mayer, how are you? Reka, what's up? Melissa Gaines. Oh, look at these. Michael McLean. Oh, I'm pulling for you, brother. I'm pulling for you. Come on, make me proud. And I think if I got this correctly, I think your sister just jumped into the boot camp. How about that? Family affairs. I believe that was her. And Deb, how are you? And Stefan and Jeff and Terry and TD. Yes, register. Tom Phillips. Oh, you guys are awesome. Cecilia, Andrea, Denisha. Stacy's got my back here, Paco. Any, oh, Paco, all in her, love it. Okay, so make sure, you're, make sure you're registered for the mini camp. Okay, make sure. 
I got loads of free stuff next week. Like, and I'm giving away prizes, but you gotta be there. So it's pretty, pretty cool. Olga from Long Island, Jonathan Sewell, meditate for 20 minutes daily. If you don't have time to do that, meditate. I meditated before, so this morning, I meditated 20 straight, that's it. I had, cause I had stuff to do. And then uh, I will meditate again today uh, as well. BK Tooth Garden. I don't know what that is, but hey to you. And Geraldine, what's up? Geraldine, come to me. The lifetime membership for the leadership crew, the Apollo team, is only good for the next 23, oh sorry, no, 25 hours, because we're on at one o'clock tomorrow. Is this a live stream? JT, it sure is. Well, you know, I've been watching a ton of your videos. Hey, Annie, I've been watching a ton of your videos, took your advice. Look, look at this. You people, I'm, I keep telling you in my emails. I just wrote a whole bunch of emails to you about how the world's on fire and how you should be getting these kind of salary in increases. Well, you know, Andy, I've been watching a ton of your videos, took your advice, and it helped me land a job that's a 76% raise. Your advice on not divulging salary expectations got me 10K by itself. I love it. Love it. Can we give him or her a huge shout out? You are welcome. Ildi, Kelly Kennedy Lapping, back at it. I love it. I hope, uh, wait, I think you're on the, on the East Coast. I'm pretty sure of that. Great to have you. And Joyce, I love it, from Mexico. Dogs and kids make it tricky to stay on track because their needs are not on a schedule, so it makes time blocking and focused attention tricky. Andrea, from your lips to God, no argument there. Control what you can control. I, I realize uh, that it's difficult, but, but believe me, there are a lot of people with children reaching great heights, reaching great heights. And so I, I know every, every day it's probably not the same. Right here at 5 o'clock, it's probably like 5.02 because he eats at 5 o'clock. He's got the watermelon in his mouth and he wants me to play, so I have to stop what I'm doing. But I know secretly that there's a little 5 o'clock break on my calendar. I love it. All right. Uh... Let's see, Kara is spoon feeding me. Uh, Hero Brian, yes, Gina, learn my, from my 105 year old grandma how to be disciplined and humble, true grit. I'm, I'm saying whatever she did, let's follow that advice. <laughs> Damien Ford, implementation of change is hellishly difficult. It is, but you know what I appreciate about you? That you're in the dang system every day, and I know you just watch Designing an Essential Life in my leadership program and a bunch of others and I appreciate your commentary and I appreciate your engagement. I totally love that you jumped in and are enjoying a year past like that. And, and do you see, do you see? Focus, baby. It's like, doesn't matter. Bullets can be flying over my head, dogs can be barking, it makes no difference. DFP, Dana, 79, I'm a kinesthetic learner. The online courses are not engaging enough for me. I appreciate that. I'm a person that learns best by doing it. How would you tackle? I'm not an audible learner at all. Okay, so for you, this is exactly what I do. So that that training that I took a few you know weeks back, I I, I zipped through it and I made my notes. Then I had to apply it to my life, right? What the guy was teaching. Looks something like it, but not exact. I'm dealing with a different body of people. I have different types of buyers. I have dif different things. And then I have, to, I have to get in and do it. So when I think about the learning, I, okay, you know that expression like, don't work hard, work smart? Well, whatever idiot said that didn't work in a business that required a lot of trial and error. Because if I work really hard, and I work really smart together, I'm gonna smoke the person who works smart. And I'm gonna find out all the, all, where all the landmines and all the holes and what's gonna work and what's not gonna work and I could run through more tests faster, okay? Period, it's inarguable, okay? So, so for you, for Dana, you gotta outline and take what the instructor is saying in whatever, me, anybody, whoever, whatever you're learning and then you gotta get it into motion and you gotta go fast and you gotta watch the data and you gotta look at it and you gotta pay attention. And you will learn and adjust based on the reactions. This is what I do every single month. I have to do this. 
right? So it's, I mean, we all learn by doing. You, I could read all I want about doing a live show. I actually, I, I don't do this a lot, but I happen to catch another trainer's live show, two minutes of it. And my, my feedback to her would have been, go live every day for 30 minutes, 30 days, every day, seven days, go right in a row. Because you're only going to get better by doing it. And if you're doing it once a week, you're not going to get better. You're doing it once a month, you're really not going to get better. And so whatever it is, you got to rep it. You got to do it. You got to try it. You got to see what works. You got to respond to what works. You got to make the adjustment. You got to do that faster. Actually, wait a minute. I don't, oh, man. I wish I, I'm sure I... Oh, I don't have it. Dang. I was just... You know, I was just like trying to clean my office and I was reorganizing my, my cards and, um, and I, 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 the one I want to show you, Dana, I don't have real handy, but iterate, iterate, iterate. Geraldine, question, just out of curiosity, do you sometimes present BC or leaders to your clients? Uh, I'm assuming what you mean is, uh, on the executive search side and it, uh, we did, if they were a bullseye, which is rare, and we are we are sunsetting that side of the business. I'm spending a lot of time doing this, so we're not spending as much time doing the executive search. And some of my, a lot of my clients, we've turned over to other people. We've recommended other places for them to go. So so not not as much. Uh, J T. Andy is really genuine person, great uh, perseverer, and great presenter. Thank you for that. Gene Rebel, isn't this also related to setting boundaries to those around you and for yourself? Yes. You know why you need to set the boundaries? Okay, so first off, people treat you the way you coach them to treat you. Okay, Gene, for you, run in your business, your scope creep with your clients. Up front, here's the contract. Up front, here's the terms. Here's the process we're going to go through. When you get outside this process, here's what we do. Here's how we address it. Here's how we decide whether that's included or not. Here's how whatever, whatever, whatever. Then three weeks later, like, hey, would you do this extra stuff? Remember three weeks ago when I told you? Let's revisit that. These are the boundaries. This is all the stuff that needs to be set. It's not just about your day. It's about everything. It's about everything. So, I mean, like, silly stuff. Silly stuff. Like, the boot campers. You know I'm not doing any coaching sessions next week. Right? I've been having to prep you for that for a month. Like, and, and anytime I interact with somebody, I'm like, hey, you can't get a session between whatever. There's a lockdown. That's a boundary. Because I need to be all fresh and I got a ton of work to do outside of the three hours a day that I'm going to be live. That's a boundary. So you got to do it. You got to protect it. Abigail Quackenbush, please talk about focus versus capabilities. Okay. I love this. Focus is your ability to hold your attention on a particular thing for a sustained period of time. I would also use it synonymously with concentration. Okay, now there's focus like I need to focus. Like how is it that I could look through a Canon M50 lens and never lose my, never lose my train of thought, right? That's focus. Okay, that's practiced. But it isn't just practice because I look through the camera and I know you're there asking me this. I sit in the chair and meditate. I, I, I reset, right? I remind myself certain things. I know how to do certain things. I practice certain things. Like that, that's focus. Okay, now the ability to deliver what I need to do, the message to you, is a capability. So a capability usually it has something to do with a skill set. Now focus is a skill. It's something that needs to be practiced. But to me, uh, you could say, well, focus is a capability that will enable me to do something. But when I was speaking about capabilities, I'm talking about your abilities, um, how to speak, how, how, to, how to organize, how to, you know, a little bit more of a, uh, a skill that you would consider common that's foundational for what you would do. So, for example, a lot, a lot of times I'll use this one because it's pretty easy to illustrate. If you're a salesperson, you have to know how to sell your widget. Okay, so there's a certain kind of script. There's a certain kind of, hey, the client is 
my widget, my boot camp, my training program, you're going to say, well, Andy, how fast does it work? Well, am I going to, I live in such and such a country. Is there a return policy? All these questions that I know you're going to ask. So a, a skill to sell that particular widget is practiced through what? Delivery of the presentation, a, a knowledge and command of the, of the subject matter, the anticipation of the questions you're going to ask, and so on. That's a hard skill. Okay, that's a specific skill, but a capability to be able to market and the marketing messages and the delivery and all that good stuff has to do with my ability to understand human behavior, your pain points, what will resonate with you, right? And my organization, my, my ability to send the proper sequence of messages, to have a conversation, to build trust, to do all this. These are capabilities that will make any salesperson really great and it will transcend my ability to sell a particular training product. Before that, I sold consulting services. Before that, I sold something else. Most recently, I sold recruitment services. That's a business-to-business -business sale. But the analogies that are drawn from the capability of being able to understand that that person who needs to hire a recruitment firm has a certain suite of product uh, problems, right? So that, that's what I mean. So those are capabilities that, that tend to transcend. Focus is a, um, a, Abigail, I don't know, I can't remember if you're also in the leadership program. There is a whole focus session, like that I break it all down for you of exactly how I focus and what I do and how it's an all the time thing. Hope that helps. Nina's mom, I did well in the second inter round interview with the hiring regional manager using your tips and questions to ask. Awesome. Doing third interview Monday with a different regional manager. Hiring regional, okay, so I'm not sure what the, what the function is. What questions should I expect and prepare? So it's difficult to say uh, that there will be, without knowing uh, what the, what your function is or what their interviewing process is. So let me give you an example. So if you said to me, well, Andy, um, I, 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 there's five rounds of, of interviews. What might I expect at each? Well, I would say, well, there's probably a screen. They're going to ask you the fluffy HR stuff. Who are you? What you're about? What are you looking for? What's your expected salary? And that, that nonsense. Then you might go to a hiring official or a technical interview. And by technical, I don't mean the technology. It could be just, you know, you're, you're a process manager, you know, how do you do this and that? Like your specific functionality, your working knowledge of your subject matter, that's a technical interview, loosely termed. Uh, or you might meet with the hiring official who might ask you similar stuff. Then you might go to somebody else and then it might be, well, other teammates and that regional manager who's not the hiring regional manager might be asking you uh, questions just to get a feel for whether you'd be good to work with or what your, what your knowledge might be. Some interviewing processes have a behavioral interview inserted early on. Their belief, not mine, is that you know, your, your past behaviors are an indicator of your future performance and they insert that up front. It really depends. So I don't know what that person's function is. Sometimes a third round could be with a customer, a teammate, an internal customer, or something like that. They wanna determine how you're gonna support them. So it, it's difficult to to anticipate. However, let me leave you with this tip. If you are, remember this, okay, right, chestnut checkers, and let's use common sense. If you made it through the hiring official, right, Nina's mom, you made it through the hiring official, and you're going to talk to somebody else. What does that tell you? What can you be damn certain of? That hiring official is likely, not 100%, likely with probability and odds right now, is wanting you to succeed, okay? And the fact that I have a dog under my foot is not gonna sway my focus right now, but they want you to succeed because they're moving you forward, okay? They're moving you forward. So what I would do is I would say to the hiring regional manager, hey, this is great, what would that third interview Monday different regional manager be interested in knowing about me? Is there anything in particular about my background that you think would be important to him or her? Why would you want to ask that? Because I don't want you to stink. If I'm moving you forward, isn't my reputation on the line? Right? If I moved you forward, I want you to succeed. If I had questions, 
I might hold. Now, there's a possibility that I turn to the third, you know, the regional manager and say, hey, Nina's mom, she's, you know, I, I liked her. I needed to dig a little deeper over here. We didn't have enough time to go through that. There could be some of that. But that would likely come up if you ask the question. And so, so I would, I would have, you know, if once I, once I, uh, once I found, once I found out that, uh, that I, oh my God. Hey, honey. Lynn. Linda. Ginge, come on. Oh, this is really funny. Come on, come on up. Come on. Come here. I need you to come. Come on. Come here. Come on. You want to see the show time? Come here. So once I, this is, this is Ginger and she's, Ginger, want to say hi? We're, we're trying to coach Nina's mom. I know. I'm not sure why you're scared. Okay. So, but, but I would, I would definitely ask, I would go to the recruiter. I would ask the recruiter, is there anything in particular that this person might want to know? And so I hope that helps. Uh, it's, it's a little, it's a little difficult, you know, without knowing. Okay. Come on. You gotta go, go, go see mommy. Go see mommy. Okay, um, what do we got here? Tanya, boot camper. Hey, Andy, great session. I was wondering if you could give me some advice on career change. Go to the career change module. Uh, I know the skills that I love to use. Tanya, I set up for you four stages, 12 steps. Do them in sequence. It's the way I would go about it. And for you, for you, I would go to the coaching session that I did on December 16th. The third topic was getting directed. That is one heck of a topic for you. The third section in there where I talk about the 10 steps that I would go through to, to, to get on in the proper like swim lane or on the proper tra trajectory if I, was, if I was not certain what my next path would be. So check that out. Blue Moore's prospective employer insisted I give him a number after a successful interview. He pretty much said I got the job. Shall I reply a range or number, and will that sound too aggressive? No way, no how, don't give him anything. Just say, I appreciate that. I would love to work here. Make me a fair offer based on how you think I performed, and we'll go from there. That's, that's what I, and, and if, even if they insist, say, do, do, you, do you have a number in mind? Do you have a budget? Why don't we start there? Because at least pick a starting point because I'd like to look at everything in detail so that I fully understand all the components of the offer. Okay. I know you're saying they insist, but I would kick it back to them and I would say just whatever number you think is appropriate. And if you need a number, why don't you give me a number and I'll just okay it based on what I know and say, that sounds reasonable. Let's start there. Uh, but I need to see the rest of it. Don't don't give them a yeah. That sounds great. Like okay, I'll take it. Just let's start there. Jamie C, do you have any tips on presentation to a customer interview? Yes, I have never done that. Jamie C, wait, Jamie C, you in the boot camp? Okay, wait. I think was so it Jamie C? There is a a video on the YouTube channel about how to give a presentation in a job interview. Go there, it's exactly what you need. If you are in my leadership program, I can't remember if you're also, I think you're Jamie C, my boot camper. Uh, if you're in the leadership program, I have a lot of communication and presentation and persuasion and all kinds of stuff in there too. Thomas C, found a role of my interest in an org where I have a contact in LinkedIn shallow he might be in the hierarchical line for the role should i approach him directly uh there's a lot of speculation is there anybody else you have if not i would approach that person don't say anything about the just say i'm looking to join that team it looks like you're on the team or you're at least in the group can you make a recommendation you know can you can you make a referral i would start there it there's a lot of questions i would have on that particular uh, on that particular one. I'm going to try to get in alignment here. Kara, are you... Where yet? All right, I'm going to go back to you. How are we doing on time? All right, let's keep going to the down, down of the hour. Okay, Luke, uh, Lucas, I'm a project manager. If processes 
that my predecessors owned didn't stick, would it be safe to say the pre predecessor didn't do a good job? I'm getting compared a lot to the predecessor. Uh, it would not be safe to say that primarily because why did they not stick? Just because the predecessor put processes together doesn't make them great and it doesn't make them stinky, okay? They could be awesome. Uh, so, as a cons I, I started my, the, the, nearly the first 20 years of my life, I was a management and IT consultant for what's now Accenture. Or sorry, so I started 10 years there. I spent another almost 10 years at a couple other companies, but basically I was an IT and management consultant. And we would build these absolutely amazing souped up systems for our clients. And the one thing we always knew had to take place was that if the change management of the, of the initiative was not dialed in and humming, then it didn't matter how great that system was. If people didn't understand how to use it, why they should be using it, what to do with it, and so on, we were gonna fail. Now, I see a lot of teams build great, great processes and good infrastructure only to then detract from using them because what? Either, either they didn't buy into it, it wasn't sold to them properly, it wasn't enforced properly, it's usually a leadership issue more than anything. So that's the first place I look, I go up, not assume that my, my predecessor was, was bad. I wanna know, I'd be asking questions. Why didn't it work? Why didn't you use it? Well, we don't think it'll work, why is that? Okay, that's, there's a lot of investigation there that you need to do. Tom Phillips, back for another year, still working on that commitment discipline thing. You hang in there. Ayush. Hello, sir. If I have made collegiate resume on your advice and I got three calls from the best mechanical engineering companies in India. Oh, thanks a lot. Sir. I love it. Do you know? Okay. Can I say this? This is really funny. I wish I could. I did not want to. I almost put this one up on the screen. I got an email from somebody who downloaded my collegiate resume template. I read this one to my wife, screaming at me, saying how ridiculous and what an idiot I was because they're, uh, they're using words like appalled and all in capital letters. I read this stuff, right? Like all this stuff because she couldn't get over that I would recommend that she send this resume out for a job. And she's reading what I wrote in the template. Now, if you've never seen the collegiate template, it's full of jokes. It's, 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 it's like I give you the template and I give you a beautiful career summary. I literally write the career summary, or sorry, uh, your profile summary for the college students. All you have to do is insert school name, this, that, that, and just put it right in. And then the rest of it is written as a framework with total jokes in it. And she's like, this might have worked in 2014, and this, <laughs> I laughed so hard. I'm like, you know, hey, it's only been downloaded by 100,000 people, but you're the first one that didn't get my jokes, so I don't know what to say. But all I can say is, Ayush, I wish, I wish she would have saw that testimonial. That is awesome. I need to get in alignment here. All right, I must have lost all that stuff. All right, hang on, let me go to the next one. You guys wouldn't believe my life. You wouldn't believe what I see. All right, David Gurton, thoughts on making an appearance at the company as a guest to take a tour and use that info during the interview. If they have guest tours, then yes. Do not just show up at the company. Wait, there are rare cases that I would do that. In general, I'm telling y'all not to, but yes, I would say, oh, I'm so interested I took a tour. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Blue Moors, self-discipline is my nemesis. Love the gold definition and subtract sacrifice tip and additional any additional advice to overcoming falling back to bad habits and increasing consistency. Yes. And I do this with everything in my life. The way that you don't fall into bad habits is you do a couple of things. Number one, you need constant reminders. Let me give you an example. I have a journal that is sitting there because I already journaled. I have this, I don't know, can you see this? I think I told you. Okay, wait. 
See this thing here? Okay, this is your live show, live schedule. But over on the right here, there's a list of things here, okay? That list of things is reminders that I read every day about my operating behavior, okay? And that, you know, it tells me about being responsible for my energy, right? There's other things, you know, tr you know, you know t t t tons of things. Don't complain. You know, there's a number of things that I remind myself. Now, you would think, well, geez, that's silly, of course. Yeah, but do you know how easy it is in the middle of the heat of the moment to feel that way or not feel that way? Okay, it's just, it's just an example. There's routines. Okay, now, routines are your friend. And I'm talking about routines that are constantly done. So every morning when I journal, I glance at the front page of the journal that also has these things. But then this sits here and I see them throughout the day. And then I have to go through a routine, a transition routine. So at 12.30 when we knock off here, I'm going to do something between 12.30 and 12.35 that's going to help me reset what I need to do at 12.35 and beyond. Okay, and so on. The reason we get from, away from the habits, that's one reason. There's just not a routine dialed in. The second reason is, I don't know if you've ever heard the analogy like the rider and the elephant. Um, Chip and Dan Heath uh, use this in their book Switch. I, a million others have as well. I like those guys. But, um, you know, the, the, the rider, is, is, rider of the elephant is the rational part of your brain. The elephant is the emotional part of your brain, okay? And so when, when you're in the gross, the great, a great example, because I love potato chips. When you're in the grocery store, the rider needs to say, Andy, don't buy the potato chips and put them in the, in the pantry because at 4 o'clock after you get done with all the coaching sessions or whatever, you're going to want to go and get some chips. Now, that intercepts, so you, your present self is saving you from your future self. Okay, that is something that that has to be disciplined, right? And so I don't put the potato chips in the in the in the cupboard so that I'm not tempted to grab them when I when I'm emotionally weak. So those are those are two really good tips. So if you've got the routines. If you, I've shown you guys my menu board in the kitchen, right? I know what I'm eating every night for the week. What, what does that do? Well, it saves me from last minute having to run out to get fast food, which I would never do. But that's what people do because they don't have the routine down. So the fish comes out last night. It sits, you know, right? It's defrosted. We know I'm going to cook it. All that good stuff. So it, it, it's, about, it's about having the routines. And then it's about making sure that if you are in vulnerable moments, that the rational part of your brain is saving you from your future bad self. That, that, try, try that. If Blue Morse, I, I don't know what you, you, your hand, if you are not in the leadership program, you need to get in the damn leadership program because the productivity challenge is like the key to routine. Like it is the way to roll. Tom, getting asked to share load on largest client uh, with coworker as job scales. Is there an opportunity for more compensation? Well, it depends. Uh, so the first thing that I see, you know, previous client relationship winding down, moving to a larger client. If, if you are just being handed, like if you're going from a mid-sized client to a large client, and I don't know how you get paid. So I don't know if you're like fees under management and you get a percentage, that's a raise. If it's, well, you know, we're now giving you an opportunity to do something more, remember this, folks. Your first step into a larger scale of responsibilities is natural. The employer is giving you an opportunity. That should be a reward. And they're testing it to make sure you, it can happen so that maybe on their next iteration or whatever, you can negotiate your raise. That's fine. Okay? If you are genuinely being handed major, major responsibility. Like I had a woman. She worked in the boot camp, Karen. She, we, she ended up getting a job. And she started in the central region in the U.S. where there was nobody, and she built it out. Okay, she builds this out. Then what happens? The southeast director leaves. She picks that up. The south central director leaves. She picks that up. Now, all of a sudden, she's managing like the U.S. That's, that's raise time, man. That's negotiating more money because now I'm doing a lot more. I'm selling everywhere and so on. So, uh, you know, you got to you gotta. You got to, there's a thought process here, but you're also, for most people, if you are staying with the same employer and they're giving you more opportunity, but you're stepping up, but you're doing the same things, you're just handling more, that to me is not an immediate, you know, you shouldn't immediately go, oh, I need, 
I need more money. If all of a sudden your scope is expanding tremendously and you're doing a lot of different functions, like I'm not just doing sales, I'm doing sales and marketing now. I'm the head of sales and marketing. I'm the chief operating officer or whatever. That's different. So let, let's, uh, let, let's think about that and let me see if I can, I can squeeze Ian in here. Ian, because you're my boot camper. Uh, hey Andy, what does one do when you get a job offer with a company you're targeting, salary discussed last, with restricted exit clauses I can't accept? So you can negotiate certain things out. I don't know what the exit clauses are. I don't know how long they are. If they're putting you on a sideline for some reason, if it's a certain amount of time, there's usually, I mean, I've negotiated a lot of, of, of contracts with, with very, very penal exits, but it'd be like, you can't work for any company that even has any letters A through Z for 12 months, and then but we'd negotiate a huge parachute. And then I'd say, take the year off when that ever happens. Sometimes what will happen is circumstances will cause the employer to forego any of the exit conditions. If they want to let you go, there might be reasons that you can uh, do that. I never, I had never recommend you go see an employment lawyer, but it might be something that you want to do. Uh, if you, you know, in a lot, in a lot of the one on ones that I do, I actually look at people's contracts and make sure that there's nothing glaring, but I don't know what those exit clauses are, but I would, I, I, number one, I would try to negotiate them out. And number two, then if you can't negotiate them out, then, then you got to start asking yourself, do I actually want to take this job? So that's, that's all I have on that, my friends. And I, that's all I've got. Job search mini camp starts. I'm in your inbox on Sunday. If you are a leader, last call for the lifetime membership. We're rolling with Apollo tomorrow at one. And I think if you're in the boot camp, I think I've also given you opportunities to join the leadership program with uh, with the lifetime option that's also expiring. So y'all are on a deadline. That's not for the whole community. If you are in none of my programs, but you like, what's this le lifetime leadership thing? I love Andy so much. I got to be in. Then you got to email support and Kara has to explain it to you, which she will happily do. All right, you guys, love you all. Appreciate the attention. Really stay locked in on your goals. Learn, but be disciplined about how you do it and apply it. And make sure, speaking of discipline, you remain disciplined. All right, you be cool. I'll see you. Now I got to go tend to Ginger. All right, bye.